Welcome back. My name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to be doing a very basic introduction to using matplotlib with Python. So let's see what we can learn. So what we're going to be doing is found right here on the screen. You can see it for yourself. We are going to be learning about how to you know, make graphs of two lines, set up some tick marks, line width, line color, all these different things that you can see right here. The shape of the line, labeling, annotating the graph, and also legend and title. Those are some of the tools we're going to be learning here. So first, of course, we need to put in some basic uh, modules that we need so that we can have the success that we desire. And so right here in this first little cell, you can see for yourself that we're going to be using the Pi data set, importing some data there, and we're going to be using a data set called Toothpaste. So uh, also in line two, you can see that we're importing matplotlib. So you can see right here, and we're just going to, dis to display the data right here. So we don't need to know the detail of the data because we're not doing a formal analysis. We're just making some, uh, some visualizations for practicing purposes. But here's the data right here for those who are curious pertaining to uh, toothpaste. And we're going to move on now. So the first thing we're going to learn is how to make a graph of you know one and two lines, focusing mainly on two lines. But here's how this works. Let me just make it for one line first. And so you can see if you, t if you type in plt.plot, now why do we use plt? Because we are calling matplotlib as plt right here. So this is kind of like our temporary nickname for this module instead of having to type out the whole thing. So if you type in plt.plot, and then of course you put the name of your data set right here. So for us it's df. And then this right here inside the brackets is the name of the actual column that we're pulling from, so mean A. And so you can see we have one line. If we want two lines, we just repeat this process and we just put in a different variable. And so now you can see right here that we have both now. Everything is working together appropriately. Now the next thing we're going to deal with is of course how to deal with uh, tick marks. That's our next goal. So with the tick marks, we are trying to change the, the X and Y axes, I believe, where the tick marks are at. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. So here we go. So here we go right here. So the first thing we have to do is set an instance of our axes. That's in line one. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, using PLT and then, of course, using this little function right here, axes. Then we set our axes right here. So what's going to be different here is that instead of having a, a number every single time, like here, you can see one, two, three, four, five to nine, we're going to have only the odd numbers, one, three, five, seven, nine. And this right here, lines four and five, is just still calling uh, two, making two line, uh, line plots on the same uh, graph, if you will. So just press control enter. And you can see right there, Look closely, you can see right there for yourself that now we have tick marks on every odd number instead of every single number. That's the main difference here. So to manipulate that, what's really unique here for our purposes is this right here. Lines, actually lines one, two, and three. This is what's unique, is being able to set your tick marks for whatever you want. Now, for our next one, we're gonna change the line type. Again, this is not that complicated. And we're just going to keep building on the code that we, we've already developed instead of starting over from scratch. So for our purposes, what's really new here is we made some changes to the code in lines four and five. We still have the odd tick marks. We're still making the two line graphs, if you will. But what's really, really special here is this information at, at the end. Now we're changing what type of line we get. And I want to show you this. And we're also changing how thick the line is. So it's better to see it than talk about it. So right here, you can see we have our two uh, uh, lines right here. And so for the dashes here, we're using this little argument right here. So the two, the two dashes in quotation marks. For the dots, which they look very similar, we're using the colon right here. So that's kind of the difference for this uh, particular one. So now we found a different way to distinguish between our two lines. 
in addition to what we've already done in the past. And then of course you can also change the color. Let me go ahead and show you how to do that as well. So we're going down to this cell. The only change is in line four and five for our purposes. So this R right here represents red and the K I believe right here represents black. So now we're going to have a red line with dashes and we're going to have a black line with dots. That's what's new here. Everything else in this particular cell is the same. And so you can see right here with your own eyes what's going on. Again, these are little small ways to manipulate. And of course, red and black are not the only colors. You can, there's lots of documentation out there on, on other potential colors that you might want to use. Now, we're going to change the point type. So watch carefully what we do here, because it's really hard to see the difference because some of these uh, examples are very minute. Again, our only changes are in lines four and five. So right here, we're adding this little uh, z uh, uh, O here. That's going to make our have little dots of little little dots of zero when it, when it's appropriate. And then we have this D right here. Let me show you what it looks like instead of talking about it abstractly. So if you look really really close, you're going to see that we have circles here. That's why we have this um, O here. We have circles here. And then the D stands for diamonds. So if you look really close, you can see we have little diamonds at each major tick mark in our data here. And so that's another small little way to, you know, manipulate your out your visual visualization, if you will. All right, almost done. We're working our way towards the end. Now we're going to learn about how to manipulate the uh, X and Y labels. And so we're going to add a little small something in the middle of our code at lines four and five. Everything else is exactly the same, except for what you're going to see in lines four and five. This is new right here. So we're going to label our X axis, X example, and our Y axis as Y example. And we're using PLT dot X label and dot Y label to accomplish this. So I press control enter. And what is new here is this information right here at the bottom. This X example here and this Y example here that was not available up here. You can see there's no label on the X and Y axes here. And last but not least, we're going to learn about how to create a legend and also how to add things to the actual plot in terms of annotation, which sometimes can be very important. So take a look at this. What's new here? Well, we have something new here in line six where we are adding the word Python onto our graph. That's this information right here. S stands for string probably. And here are the co coordinates on where this is going to be at on the graph. So at three comma four, that's new here. And then of course at the bottom, these last two lines, lines nine and 10, for line number nine, we are putting in our legend. And of course for line number 10, we're giving the plot a title at the top called plot example. So let's go ahead and make this. So here we go. We now have a title at the top. We also have a legend. So first is going to represent the red line and second is going to represent, represent the black line. That is why we have this stuff here inside the square brackets. And then of course, don't forget we have the word Python on here. If you look, Python starts right here at three, four is right here off to the lower left hand side of our, our plot. And that's how you're able to add different uh, um, annotations to a visualization using matplotlib. So, we have pretty much went through this. Let me kind of review what we talked about and conclude the video. So in this video, we actually learned how to do some basic manipulation of a data visualization using matplotlib. So we just plotted some very, very simple uh, line graphs here using various tools. Of course, line graphs are not the only visualization. We can make, you know, bar graphs and, and pie graphs and histograms, it goes on and on, but we, we just focus on, you know, how to manipulate using a line graph. And of course, the only thing that would change is perhaps the data type might change. And then you would have to make uh, manipulations. All the other manipulations would be the same for like changing the color and things like that, depending on the context, of course. And so we look at tick marks and uh, changing the line type and the thickness, the color, uh, the points, the X and Y labels, and of course, how to add a legend in a title and even include annotation. So these are all powerful, useful tools 
for an individual who is responsible for data, data visualization in their uh, organization. So I would like to thank you a great deal for watching this video. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.